Wow, 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 wow. It's another moment we are together on this wonderful TV show called Moments of Uplifting. I am your pastor, Eve Kiara. I'm born again. Jesus is Lord in my heart. Uh, today, I want us to think about something which God has promised us in Psalm 68 and the verse number 19. And uh, I'll read this verse, and I believe somebody will be blessed. The word of God says, Blessed and be God who loads us with the benefits every day. Um, blessed and be God who bears us up. As we come to think about the program today, we need God to bear us up at one time or other. There are those times when we have come across very difficult circumstances in our lives and we don't know exactly what to do. All we do is feel like crying, feel like locking ourselves up, feel like we want to run away from everything. But we have this verse which is encouraging us today, blessed be God who daily bears our burdens and who daily loads us with the benefits. Today I want us to read a very interesting story about a woman who had it all wrong. She began by losing her husband. And then here is a son who has also died, the only son. And it is good we read the word of God. Today I am here to encourage somebody who is feeling like giving up in this life who is feeling like things are not working well. I want to read Luke chapter 7 from verse number 11. The Bible says, Soon afterward, he, that is Jesus, went to a town called Nine, and his disciples, and a great crowd went with him. As seen drew near to the gate of the town, beyond a man who had died, was being carried out the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And a considerable crowd from the town was with her. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her. Then he came up and he touched the bear, and the bear as he stood still, and he said, Young man, I say to you, arise. And the dead man sat up, and he began to speak, and Jesus gave him to his mother. Fear seized them all, and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet has arisen from among us, and God has visited his people. And this report about him spread throughout the whole of Judea and all the surrounding country. I can tell you, it feels very hopeless that your husband is dead and you have one child, a son. The Bible talks about him as a man who had died. What a tragedy. There was a lot of, uh, I believe, things that this lady was thinking about. What will now happen to my life? Who is going to take care of me when I am old? What will happen to me? And the life looked like in the years or days to come, it's going to be very dark. And indeed, naturally thinking, you would project into a dark life. And this lady was crying. And the neighbors were crying with her. Actually, the Bible says a large crowd was following her going to help her bury her only son. What a tragedy. She was crying. And then there was another crowd. Yes, a crowd of this woman of nine who is crying because she doesn't know what to do. There was this ruler, the centurion, whose servant was very sick. And the people were imploring Jesus to go and heal him. And Jesus spoke a word, he even never went home. And this servant was healed. 
and everybody was excited. So we have two crowns here, a crown that is crying and a crown that is uh, crying and mourning, going for burial, and a crown which is really celebrating the miracle that Jesus had done. In this world, there are crying people. In this world, there are people who don't know what to do. But also in the same world, there are those who are very, very happy. So there are seasons in our lives, season of crying and a season of joy. And we look at this woman. She was so desperate. And Jesus looked at her. May the Lord Jesus Christ look at you today. May he see you are crying. May he see your size. May he come your way. And he looked at this woman and she was crying. And he told her, don't cry. It's like, why are you telling me not to cry? My son is dead. My husband was dead earlier. And now you are telling me not to cry. Tell me one reason why I should not to cry. There are many people who have a reason to cry. Maybe they don't have food. Maybe they are sick. Maybe they, you may have cancer. Maybe you have uh, uh, HIV AIDS or you have a terminal illness and you have received a very uh, negative message concerning your life. And actually you feel like a crime. And sometimes even when people come to comfort you, you feel like it is not enough. You feel like, what can I do now? But we have one. We have one. Who is called Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world? Who is called Emmanuel, God together with us? He always shows up for those who are suffering. He showed up for this woman. You know, Jesus knew it about, about it all. Even when he was coming from Capernaum and going to Nain, he knew he was going to meet this woman. And he knew what he was going to do because God is omniscient. He sees everywhere. He knows everything. So wherever you are right now, God is seeing you. Whatever illness you have, you may be in a hospital. You may be thrown out by your husband or your wife. Uh, things may not be working. Maybe you haven't seen your son for days and you don't know where he is. And you are feeling very bad about it. I want to tell you, Jesus will show up for you. He showed up for this woman. And indeed, something incredible that any human being would not think about. She would never think that her son would come back to life. But Jesus had compassion on her. And he told her, don't cry. So now, if you say don't cry, what do you do? Jesus touched the coffin. And uh, the, those who were bearing the coffin stood and he undressed the dead. May the Lord our God undress the dead things in your life. My sister, my brother, don't give up. There are people who want even to take a rope and end it all. But I am here as a servant of God to tell you, the Lord will show up for you. She was not expecting Jesus to show up. But Jesus knows those who are broken hearted. Jesus knows those who are crying. After all, he is our creator, he is our God. And he saw this woman from afar. And then indeed the unthinkable. He undressed the dead person. And turned the dead person, young man, rise up, arise. Wow. And he, he, he sat on the coffin. Well, we are not told a lot of drama about what happened. But Jesus took that young man and then gave him back to the mother. Wow. What a joy. Our Lord is our restorer. Our God calls those things which are dead back to life. Maybe today you are feeling things are dead. Nothing is working for me. I have trouble with my husband. I have trouble with my wife. I have trouble with the school fees. I don't know what to do. The Lord will show up for you. I came to encourage you today on this show called moments of uplifting. May the Lord God see your cry. May the Lord God uplift you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I want to read a couple of verses about the power of our God and why we can trust on this God. 
In Deuteronomy chapter 31 and the verse number 6 to 8, Deuteronomy 31, verse number 6 to 8, we read this something very, very interesting, which the um, God told the children of Israel, they were almost the last words that Moses was telling the people as they were going to enter the promised land, but they are not yet there. In Deuteronomy chapter number 31, verse 6 in Asema, be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be in dread of them, for it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not leave you. He will not forsake you. Then Moses summoned Joshua and they said to him in the sight of all Israel, Be strong and courageous, for you shall go with these people into the land that the Lord has sworn to their fathers to give them, and you shall put them in possession of it. It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Do not fear or dismayed. Wow, this is the word of the Lord. And he did it for the children of Israel. Moses died before he got there, as God had said. But Joshua, the young man then, took up the leadership. And whatever things they needed to fight, they fought them with the help of God, and they possessed the land. I am here to encourage you today. In this uplifting moment, do not give up. Even though you are feeling like you are in the bottom of things, God will show up for you. He, he showed up for, for Joshua. He showed up for the children of Israel. And they were able to defeat enemies that were much stronger than them. I am here to encourage you, my brother, my sister, that don't give up. The Lord will bless you. It is recently when we had a worship experience in our church about uh, two weeks ago, and there is this young man who was sitting at the back. And as everybody was really praising God, and everybody was feeling fine, he sat there meditating upon his problems. And uh, an usher noticed him, and he decided to talk with him. And he asked the young man, what is wrong? And all the young man would say, is that I want to give up. I, 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 home is not good. My mother brews the local brew. I am tired of that life. You only look at him and they see actually that the young man is very tired. But when the usher uh, made me to know as the pastor of the church, uh, I decided to talk to the young man as the others were praising God. And I asked him, why do you want to kill yourself? And he told me, I have so many problems. I do not know what to do. I told him, we are praising this Jesus who has the power to change things for you. And if only you give him a chance, this Jesus will help you. I thank God so much. After much discussion with the young man, and we learned that he had even slept at the police station, God helped him to trust God. He began to trust Jesus, that Jesus can solve his problems. And we led him to a prayer of repentance, and even he welcomed Jesus into his life, and you could see the joy that came over his face after he decided to trust Jesus. My sister, my brother, my mom, my dad, wherever you are, maybe you are thinking to end it all. As these days, there, there are a lot of people who are contemplating that because of problems. I am here to tell you that God will never leave you. God will never forsake you. Just trust the Lord today and the Lord God knows you and he will help you. There is another verse I would like to read in Psalms 34, verse number 18. I like the promises of God because when we claim them, they come alive in our hands, in our hearts. The Bible says, the Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in his spirit. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted. And the Lord saves those who are broken in his spirit. Maybe your spirit is broken today. Maybe the landlord has just locked up your house and you don't know where you are going to sleep. 
But I can tell you the Lord is seeing it all. Just a little talk with Jesus will lighten your spirit. He is always near to the broken hearted and is not far away. Jesus is only a prayer away. Praise be to the Lord. He is our good God and he cares for us. There is this story also in First uh, Psalms chapter 2 and verse number 8. Hannah had it all. You know, she, Hannah was loved by her husband, Elkanah. And Anna was a worshiper, but Hannah did not have a child. And every year as they went to worship at Shiloh, she would feel so bad because her co-wife Benina would always make her feel very bad. But one day, she decided to trust God. And I am encouraging you to trust God. Let's just read the word of God. I love the word of God. First Samuel chapter 2 is a very familiar story, but it is good we read the word of God and the Lord God will help us. First Samuel chapter 2 and the verse number 8. What happened to Hannah? Hannah actually decided to stop crying and trust God. And then she has this wonderful, beautiful song that she sang to the Lord after the Lord blessed her. And she said, she said in 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 8, He raises up the poor from the dust, and he lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with the princes and inherit a seat of honor. For the pillars of the earth are the lawns, and on them he has set the world. What Hannah is saying is that she was lifted from the dust. She used to cry for the baby. For those women who do not have a baby, maybe I can share two testimonies, or one if time allows us. One is a lady in our church. For a long time, she stayed without a child. I actually went into the couple. They just come from uh, Majimbo, one of the estates in Embu. And uh, this couple, after the wedding, they did not get a child for the first year, two years, three years. And the people were saying things. And one of the things they were saying is that they did not do the traditional rituals. Probably the gods were annoyed with them. And they were feeling bad, but they decided to stay trusting God. But God came through for them. And they got a baby boy in the ninth year. I want to talk to a husband who wants to take away, uh, send away your wife because she's not getting children. Sometimes, sometimes the, 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 the wombs can be closed by God. We know Hannah's womb was closed by God. If you read chapter one, uh, she was not getting children because for whatever reason, God closed her womb. And God encouraged her and later on opened the womb. Let me tell you, my sister, don't run away. Don't go, don't think of going to try somebody else other than your husband so that you can conceive. And my dear brother, husband, if you are there and your wife is not conceiving, let us trust in God. And uh, that, that boy now is more than three years. And when I see him, I see the grace of God. The couple continued to trust God. And today they are very, very happy. Another one, I am just encouraging somebody that God will lift you from the dust. Another one, I can tell you, we waited. We waited for a long time. But still God came through. And God rewarded her with a double. She got a boy and a girl at the same time, actually on the 21st year of marriage. But they are now big, they are in Form 1, or they are about, and we really bless the Lord for that couple. I want to tell you, my brother, my sister, Lamentation chapter 3, verse 21 to 23, let me read this one, and I believe it will encourage you. Lamentations chapter number 3, it was a difficult time in the life of the people of Israel because uh, people were being taken to 
a captivity by Nebuchadnezzar and the things were not good. And the Lamentations 3, 21 to 23 says like this, and the Lord will bless us. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. So you have to recall some things so that you can have hope in God. And what are we recalling? The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, O Lord. What are we recalling to mind so that we can be strong? That the love of God never fails. The love of God is his tenderfast. The love of God is real together with us. So wherever you are watching from, I would like to pray with you that you may experience the touch of our God, claiming the promises. Uh, we have read in Psalms 34, verse number 18, that uh, the, 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 uh, that the Lord is very close to those who are broken hearted. Maybe you are sick, maybe you have just been diagnosed with a terrible disease. At one time I was so sick in the hospital. I stayed there for 13 days. But the Lord God came through for me and he healed me. And he stayed there for a long time and I was feeling, wow, high, I am well, the test was doing nothing. And I decided why don't I completely turn to God? I called my husband and told him, get me out of here. I want to trust God. I do not in any way downplay the medical as helping people get well. But uh, there are those times when you say, God, I lift up my eyes to you. I don't know what is this, but it come through for me. If you are sick today, may the Lord God heal you. He says that he sent his word. In Psalms 107, verse 20, and his word healed us. May you hang on the word of God that I am preaching today. I believe he can heal you from whatever disease in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I believe also God can sort out all problems that we may have. I want to pray with you if you are there. Uh, maybe you can uh, stretch your hand towards the television. Or if you are hearing my voice, you can decide to close your eyes so that we can pray to God and we believe God to help us. Let us pray. Precious everlasting Father in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for giving us an opportunity to share your word at this time of day. Lord, there is somebody out there who is crying. They don't know what to do. I have just told them you raised a dead man. I have just told them the miracle that you did for me. I have just told them the miracle that you did for my two sisters. Lord, I am praying in Jesus' name. Every person that is sick and they are trusting in you, Lord, I pray that you lift your hand upon them right now, my Father, that they may receive their healing. There are those who are feeling down. Maybe their children are not behaving well. Maybe they are waiting for a blessing of a baby. Maybe the business has gone down. Maybe things are simply not working and somebody is feeling like in giving up. I pray in Jesus' name, oh my God, that you may visit every person who is feeling like in giving up in this moment of uplifting. Lift them up from the dust the way you lifted Hannah, our God. Lift them from the dust, Jehovah God, the way you lifted Israel when they encountered many terrible problems along the way to the promised land. My God and my Father, I pray for a blessing upon your children tonight in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our God and our Father. Thank you for hearing our prayers, whatever the issue is. Oh God, may you hear us and may you answer us. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank God that uh, we have prayed. Maybe you have not turned over your life to Jesus like the young man I told you about two weeks ago. Maybe still your heart is heavy. I can tell you Jesus is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the creator 
of your very soul. The one who has is your life in his hands. And you can decide to put his hand in his hand that he can lead you. So if you would like to turn over your life to Jesus and welcome him so that you can have fellowship with him, you can pray this prayer uh, with me and the Lord God will bless you. You can just pray and know you are the one who is praying. I'm just leading you. Say, Lord Jesus, I open my heart to you. Come inside of my heart. Forgive me every sin in my life. I know I have done things that are not right before you. Forgive my sins, O oh Lord. I come to you for salvation. I trust in you for salvation. I pray that you bless me for the rest of my life. Amen. The Lord bless you. If you have given your life to the Lord, call the number on the screen and we will chat more and I will encourage you to know the Lord more. God bless you and keep trusting in the Lord Jesus. If you are in town, you are welcome to Deliverance Church Majimbo. Our services run from 8.30, the first service, and the second service is at 11. Welcome and God bless you. Keep trusting in the Lord Jesus. He is always near you and with you in Jesus' name.